Hi everyone, this is Yu Zhe from MIT. Today, I'll be presenting our work on harnessing structures to improve value-based planning and reinforcement learning methods. In short, we propose a new framework so that when the underlying tasks contain certain desired structures, we will be able to exploit such structured information to improve both planning and deep RL methods. To start with, let us motivate our structure viewpoint. Stochastic control often needs to control complex systems. While the state space could be high-dimensional, the dynamics are likely to possess some structured forms, such as being governed by physical laws or partial differential equations. In addition, for deep reinforcement learning, while the dimension of images is quite large, it is likely that only a few latent features are actually informative and hence sufficient. For example, such as the position of Mario and the enemies in this image. Finally, for intelligent agents such as playing Go, while the input, the board configuration, is complex, there are often cases or patterns where people have developed particular tactics. In those scenarios, there are only few, if not many, good moves. Overall, because of the structure dynamics or latent low dimensional features, it is fairly reasonable to expect that certain structure will be imposed on the optimal value of policy. The key of this work is to study meaningful structure that naturally arises and design corresponding algorithms to our benefit. So far, I have been vague about the term structure. Let's now make this concrete. To formalize our study, we need to have a notion of structure that is first task agnostic and second emphasize some global and intrinsic properties of the task. In planning and deep reinforcement learning, value-based methods constitute a fundamental methodology. In particular, Q-value is widely used in many methods. Therefore, in this work, we naturally focus on the Q-value. We take a linear algebraic view by treating the Q-value as a big matrix. Here, the rows represent states, the columns represent actions, and the entries represent the value QSA. Therefore, a structured Q value would equivalently mean a structured Q matrix. One of the fundamental global structures in studying matrices is the rank of the matrix. This leads us to study the low rank structure of the Q matrix. As we will see, many control and RL tasks indeed have a low rank Q matrix, which can be effectively exploited to design better methods. To warm up, let's first consider a toy MDP with 1000 states and 100 actions. That is, the Q matrix is of dimension 1000 by 100. To obtain the optimal Q value, we perform the standard Q value iteration. Let us now visualize how the learning process evolves. On the left, we plot the mean squared error at each iteration. More interestingly, on the right, we show the approximate rank of the Q matrix during the iterations. Here, the approximate rank is defined as the first k singular values that capture more than 99 variants of all singular values. We observe that the converged Q star is of low rank, and throughout the learning process, the approximate rank drops very fast. Clearly, there is evidence supporting the intrinsic low dimensionality of this toy example. With this in mind, a natural question arises. If the eventual matrix is low rank, can we exploit the structure during the learning process? Why not enforcing such a structure throughout the iterations? In other words, with the existence of a global low rank structure, how can we exploit the structure? So, what might be the most naive idea? If there is a global structure within a matrix, then I don't need to calculate all the entries, right? Since the structure is global, I can observe and only compute some entries of the matrix and then I should be able to use the structure to recover the rest. So, the idea is simple. Let's just compute few and reconstruct the rest. But, the problem comes. How should we exactly recover the structured matrix? Well, we can resolve this by applying matrix estimation. Matrix estimation considers the problem of recovering an underlying true data matrix based on incomplete and noisy observations. This is possible when the matrix contains some global structures, in particular being low rank. In fact, ME is theoretically guaranteed with rich algorithms such as the following convex optimization approach, which solves the nuclear norm regularized problem. 
With the maturity of this field, in this work, we view ME as a principled reconstruction oracle to exploit the low rank structure. In the subsequent presentation, we formalized the previous intuitions and approaches by proposing two structure-based methods. We first present the structured value-based planning for planning and stochastic control tasks. Next, we naturally extend the idea to deep reinforcement learning and propose structured value-based deep RL. Let's get started with SVP. In planning, the foundation of SVP is the Q-value iteration, but with an additional component added. At each iteration, instead of the entire Q matrix, SVP self-samples a, a set of positions and carry out the iteration. In particular, each position is sampled with a probability P, independent of each other. This procedure produces an intermediate incomplete matrix, as shown in the middle. With the incomplete observations, SVP can now use matrix estimation techniques to fill in the remaining entries. This finally produces the entire Q matrix for the next iteration. Now, let us validate SVP on a stochastic control task, the inverted pendulum. To apply SVP, we first verify that the optimal Q matrix has a low rank structure. To this end, we again run the QVAR iteration until convergence. We empirically check the converged Q matrix and find that the approximate rank is only 7, which is quite low as compared to the matrix dimension. This indicates that the problem has an intrinsically low dimensional property, and as such, we would expect SVP to be able to exploit the structure for efficient planning. To demonstrate that, the heat map of the optimal policy is provided. Next, we show the policy obtained from SVP with only 60% of state action pairs calculated at each iteration. The resulting policy is almost the same as the optimal one. Further, we reduce the number of observations to only 20%. As one can see, this only leads to a very small difference in terms of policy. Overall, we conclude that SVP is a successful approach which exploits the underlying structure efficiently. Finally, we remark that similar results for several other control tasks are presented in the paper as well. With the successful SVP, now we move from planning to deep RL tasks. We would like to extend our intuition to leverage structures in the Q-value for deep RL. First, let us recall the process we took to, de to develop our intuition for SVP. We look at the learning process and verify that the converged Q-value is approximately low rank. Hence, we argue that one should be able to enforce the low rank structures throughout the learning iterations. Can we extend this line of development easily? Are there any issues? Well, yes. In deep RL, with images as states, the state space is basically infinite. This means that if we take our matrix view of Q value, then the matrix has infinite number of rows, making it impossible to verify the low rank property. So, what can we do? Here is an idea. If a large matrix is low rank, by definition, then, most, then almost any row is a linear combination of some other rows. In other words, if we sample a small batch of the rows, the resulting matrix is most likely low rank as well. Therefore, to understand the structure of the Q function, it is natural to understand the rank of randomly sampled batches of the learned Q function. With this idea in mind, we select four games trained with standard DQN. We take the learned Q network and sample 10,000 batches of states with batch size 32. In the figure, we show the approximate rank. The histogram is plotted in red, and the empirical CDF is plotted in blue. Apparently, there is a strong evidence supporting a highly structured Q function. For those games, the approximate ranks are uniformly small. Moreover, as we demonstrate in our paper, the global structure is actually quite common. Precisely, more than 40 games out of the total 57 games exhibit this property. Drawing the analog to SVP, this evidence naturally suggests us to harness the structure within the batch of states during the learning process, that is, each SGD step of updating the model parameters. Now, we can formally describe our structured framework for value-based deep RL. As we only focused on generic structure, it can be easily incorporated 
into any RL methods that update the Q-network via a similar step as in Q-learning. Recall that all these methods have a common update step via SGD, where a mini-batch of transitions are sampled and then the targets Y are formed according to the Bellman update. Following our previous success, we leverage ME to harness the structure within the batch of states. Instead of directly using the original Q matrix, we added an additional component. As highlighted in the red box, at each update step, a subsampled matrix is produced from the original Q hat, which is then being reconstructed via ME to give a new matrix Q dagger. Finally, this reconstructed Q dagger replaces the original Q hat to produce the target's Y. The same SGD step is then carried to update the parameters. Obviously, except the common model update step, SVRL doesn't modify any method-specific details. This is why it can be more broadly applied to many value-based deep RL methods. Now we demonstrate the efficacy of SVRL. We apply it to three representative value-based methods, namely DQN, double DQN, and dueling DQN. Here, we show the performance for four Atari games, with orange curve being the result with SVRL included. These four games are verified to be low rank. It is clear that they indeed benefit from our approach. What's more important is that the improvement is consistent across different RL methods. This highlights the important role of the intrinsic method independent structures of the tasks. We remark that such consistency has been tested for more games, and the results are well aligned with our expectation. Interestingly, however, the performance gains are different across games. Naturally, can we interpret them through a finer structured viewpoint? To this end, we select four games for further diagnosis and interpretation. SVRL performs better on two of them, slightly better for one game, and worse for the remaining one, sequest. Can we consistently interpret this increase or decrease in performance? Very naturally, our method is designed to exploit the low rank structures. Obviously, however, not all tasks would have such structures. Therefore, a, pro a promising hypothesis is to attribute the differences in performance to the strengths of their structure properties. And this naturally leads us to probe the rank of those games. As we show on the second row, unsurprisingly, there is a clear and indicative trend. For the first two games where SVRL performs better, the rank is pretty small. For the game Alien, the rank is moderately small, and hence, it still benefits from SVRL. However, for Sequest, the rank is indeed quite large. Accordingly, SVRL is not able to help too much. Moreover, we remark that the same conclusions apply to a larger extent for many games and different value-based RL methods. To summarize our investigation, we have a consistent interpretation. That is, if the learned Q function indeed contains low rank structure, then SVRL is beneficial. The strength of the structure would determine the performance gain. In particular, stronger structures tend to enjoy larger improvements. In addition, for those minority, high rank games such as Sequest, we can estimate few entries via ME and check the reconstruction errors every now and then. If the errors are persistently large, we can fall back to the standard methods. Overall, SVRL is able to exploit the structure and is effective for deep RL tasks. To wrap up, we propose a framework to exploit the low-rank structures in Q-value from planning to deep reinforcement learning. We demonstrate that it is effective on several planning tasks. Furthermore, the intuition is extended to deep RL which leads to a generic scheme for value-based methods with consistent results and interpretations. Finally, please also check out our code and website. Thank you for listening.